You can invest in horse sperm with your self-directed IRA. I cannot say that. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Jay Helms, founder of this podcast and movement known as the W2 Capitalist. Today, I say this every time, I have an amazing guest. Truly an amazing guest. This is part three of a four-part series we're doing with Quest Trust to kick off our uh, their sponsorship of the show. And today, you've heard from Juan, right? You've heard from Juan for two weeks now, or two different episodes. Today, I am joined by his boss, Anne-Marie. I've already prefaced her with, I'm going to pick on him just a little bit. He does look like the karate kid. I actually called him Daniel accidentally on the first episode. Anyway, Anne-Marie joined Quest Trust Company in 2013 currently serves as a sales officer. She graduated from St. Edwards University with a Bachelor's of Arts in Communication focused on public relations, public relations and advertising. But Anne-Marie pursued a position as an IRA specialist. In 2014, she received the designation of Certified RA Service Professional from the American Bankers Association. Anne-Marie's strong sales background and degree focus motivated her to accept a position during the sales department directing the sales department at Quest Trust Company. You have a really long bio. I'm going to skip to the end, which I think yeah, is, I <laughs> no, it's incredible. So if, if you <laughs> want to see it's all this, in the the show notes, <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. It's a lot of content, but in 2018, and I think this is in you and I were talking about this a little bit before I hit the record button, but in 2018, you were approved by the Texas real estate commission to be an instructor for of real estate continuing education courses, right? So the CREs or the CEs that uh, realtors have to do um, to can keep up their license. So very familiar with the real estate business. I didn't ask you, but we'll, we'll get into this if you have any real estate holdings at the time. And uh, But additionally, Emory manages the coordination of company events, including some of the largest and most successful events in the history of the company like Quest Expo, Fright Night, the online boot camp. You guys are doing like a webinar a week, I think, with um, um, is it on Saturdays? When you guys yeah, we we just started uh, kind of in in COVID times. Yeah, we started yeah. a self directed Saturday, so that's every Saturday. So, but truthfully, it's it's almost every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Self directed Saturday. I love the name play. That's awesome. So, mm-hmm. Anne Marie, thank you for being here on the show. Let's dive into this. I know we got about 30 minutes and as, as Juan and I were recording some episodes earlier, it went way faster than we wanted it to because we just, we both had just enjoyed, we were nerding out as uh, I'm going to use this phrase, we were nerding out a little bit, but okay. let's kind of circle back. Why not talked about the, what is a self-directed RA, right? And kind of the one-on-one show of, of what a self-directed RA is. I want to hear from your perspective. What is a self-directed directed RA, how is it different from other, let's just leave it as other retirement accounts? Yeah. So it's kind of funny, uh, you know, sometimes we'll get clients and they're filling out our application and, you know, they're marking traditional IRA or Roth IRA, (laughs) sub IRA. And they're like, Hey, wait a minute. I want to set up one of those self-directed IRAs. I think I've got the wrong application. Um, I was guilty of that too, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) See, now I feel bad. (laughs) No, actually that didn't happen. Um, I think, and this is, I'm going to pick on Juan, but in a good way, I'm telling you, if he is anything like the rest of your staff, you guys are are solid, but he prefaced me saying, look, you're not going to see self-directed RNA because that's what we do. You're not yep. choosing something different. So he did preface me with that when uh, when he sent the form over. So anyway. Yeah. No, we get that question a lot. You know, it, it's kind of a, you know, just goes back. It's, it's a misconception, really. Um, self-directed is really just a marketing term, right? It's just yeah. trying to say, hey, you're the client. You're self-directing. You're choosing the investment, right? You're the one that's in control. But, um, you know, we like to say an, an IRA is an IRA is an IRA, no matter where you're at. <laughs> Um, you know, for me personally, I have uh, a Roth IRA at Quest and I like to invest with that in notes specifically, usually. Um, but I also have a Roth over at Fidelity. Those two accounts are exactly the same, you know, how much I can contribute into it, um, when retirement age is, what the tax benefits are, right? Because that's all standard and set by the IRS. Um, really the difference is actually in what the companies themselves are going to allow you to do with it. So, Mm. you know, over at Fidelity, it's all, you know, your kind of mainstream traditional, you know, stocks, mutual funds, annuities, and then over with us at Quest with the same account, 
it's all sorts of real estate, you know, notes, private companies, oil and gas, all sorts yeah. of things. Oil and gas is an interesting topic. We may dive into that just uh, here in a little bit. But do you, do you have any real estate holdings right now? You said notes is what you primarily do or you, what are you lending money to? And this is a personal question I'm asking. I want to know because I want to make sure that I'm looking at all avenues to increase my um, yeah. IRA uh, position. So what, what do you, what, when you say notes, there's real estate immediately comes to mind. Are you investing in real estate notes or are you providing yeah. notes for businesses or what's the, what's the, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, obviously I have a, a full-time job that I love and, you know, pre-COVID was doing a whole bunch of traveling. So um, while I love real estate, that's kind of not necessarily a fit for my lifestyle right now and, and mm. you know, actively managing it. So, you know, of course, you want to still be involved in some capacity, but just a little bit more on the passive side. Um, so basically what I like to do is uh, lend money secured by real estate from my IRA to other investors. And then, you know, it works out really well because they're able to get access to the funds really quickly and, you know, have a say in what the yeah. terms are. And for me, I'm still in the real estate space, but it works for me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not really managing a rehab project. I'm not doing all of that, you know, while still traveling to conferences out yeah. of state and things like that. Yeah. So that's kind of what uh, I like to do. Is yeah. it mainly flips that you, um, and do those because it's yeah. so it's short term kind of exactly. with, with that access to that money. That's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Cause I hear, I hear this non-performing note that people can buy and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't, that is, I feel like I walk up to the crap stable when somebody says, let's talk about non-performing notes. <laughs> they can explain it to me 15 different ways and I'm still not going to understand why that I'm getting there. I know there's progress being made. Things are still clunking around up here, but the, the progress is being made in understanding that. I didn't know if you did some of that or, or not, if, but if you're lending short term to flippers, um, I totally get that. Totally makes sense. I know a lot of people who do that. Um, and when we're going to try to get them over to quest, uh, to be the custodian, uh, yeah. for, for that. So, um, so speaking of what you can and you cannot invest into, let's dive into that a little bit. What can an IRA, self-directed traditional Roth whatever the case may be if it's if it's a self-directed IRA what can I invest into and what can I not invest into yeah so ultimately it really depends on the company that you're with so you of course have the you know opportunity to do all types of publicly traded investments and for mm -hmm. that you're going to go to your more traditional style financial companies right your gotcha. fidelities your Paul Schwab's of the world right uh, and then over with us at Quest, with the same type of account, we really allow you to, one, choose all your own deals. It's completely up to you to go out there, pound the pavement, find the deal, do your due yeah. diligence, and then come back to us and we'll help you to, you know, purchase it and, and move forward with all of that in the IRA. Um, but like I said, you know, we see all types of real estate, people buying residential properties and having rental properties or they're doing flips all the way up to the much larger scale deals, commercial properties, multifamily, you know, syndicating deals for that. Um, all types of private companies. Um, of course, we see a lot of real estate in that space, but you know, like I mentioned, we definitely see oil and gas. We're based in Texas, though we're nationwide. So um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of oil and gas stuff happening here around Houston. Um, and then of course we see a lot of different notes, but um, kind of sky's the limit, you know, yeah barring a few things, really the only main two things that you can't do are you can't invest in uh, life insurance contracts mm -hmm. and you can't invest in something that's considered a collectible. So some examples are things like you couldn't have a wine collection <laughs> that you buy in your IRA, which is probably not a good idea anyway. Um, that rule <laughs> exists though. I want to meet the guy <laughs> who made that rule happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> invest your entire life savings into wine or like yeah. beer but uh, you can't do things like that you can't do um like jewelry or gems most coins um antiques like those sort of collectible type of yeah. opinion based items are usually so no cars i can't go get a 66 mustang yep. and yeah, okay with my ra dang it yeah exactly Not that I, would ever want. I don't know okay all right let's go cool. yep. you, you said most coins what, what's the where does the line get drawn? Like, what's that, what's that mean? 
<laughs> I actually learned this rule, funny story. I was once giving a presentation and I was like, yeah, you can't invest in this and that and coins and the other. And, you know, you always get the one guy in the room that raises his hands. He's like, what about gold bullion? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. I have to look that one up, but turns out there are, I guess, some exceptions for okay. things that you can do, but kind of rule of thumb is anything that's kind of a collectible based item is, is yeah. no, no, but pretty much anything else. Yeah. Gold bullion has been on the, uh, at least in my news feeds uh, here recently, a lot yeah. with uh, everything that's going on with the economy and, you know, anticipation of a housing market crash and depending on who you listen to or watch and whatnot, but yeah, Robert Kiyosaki and mm -hmm. um, those guys uh, are real. Of course, he's been pushing this for like four or five years that I know of, um, which is when I first discovered him. But um, anyway, he it's interesting. I didn't know gold bullion was uh, – um, yeah. I, I kind of want to do that just so <laughs> I can hold something and say, look, this is – look at this gold – I don't know if it's going to be a bar. It's probably going to be one little bitty <laughs> coin. But anyway, um, aside from retired retirement accounts, right, in the IRA space, um, yeah. what other types of accounts does Quest offer, right? And, and so let's answer that, and then let's talk about how they can be used a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So um, a lot of clients are, of course, familiar. You know, you've got your traditional IRAs, your Roths, you've got your kind of employer plans like your SEPs. Um, but some of my favorite accounts that are kind of forgotten a little bit are the health savings account and the mm. Coverdell education savings account that we offer too. Um, what's unique about these is that, you know, obviously with your retirement account, when you're investing, your profits go back and it's kind of a long-term play, right? You know, you want to yeah. leave your money in there growing until your retirement. But the nice thing is with the HSA and the education account, you can use both of those right now today and start paying for things completely tax-free. Mm. Like when you say things, you, can you invest with, into real estate with HSA and FSA accounts? Yeah, exactly. So basically, you the can. Fancy, like I've heard you can before. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Explain it to me like I'm five. <laughs> <laughs> so just in the same way you'd invest your retirement account, you can do that with your health savings account wow. or your education savings. Um, basically, you go out there, you find a deal. And I don't know, let's say you found a property and you wanted to purchase that it's gonna be purchased by the actual account. So it's going to sh show on the contract, you know, Quest Trust Company for the benefit of J Home gotcha. IRA account number. And then it's going to be the actual health savings account, for example, that owns the investment. And as you make profits, it all goes back in and you're not taxed on it. And then when you have some type of um, health expense or if your kids have education expenses that come up, you can pay for it all tax-free. So it's mm. nice because you can kind of supplement and you can even partner, you know, the accounts together. So like if you have a retirement account and you also have your family's health savings account, you can pool the money together to do one investment. And then you've got money going back for retirement and some money going back and you can, you know, pay for contacts or pay for the kids to have braces or Tylenol or medicine or, you know, whatever it is that you guys might need. You know what I just realized that I have hit the tip of the iceberg on my knowledge of, I'm going to use air quotes, self-directed RAs because like I, I had heard that you could use as HSAs and then matter of fact, Juan presented when he did the summit back in April, mm -hmm. he talked about this and it's one of those areas where I was, I just kind of glanced over because I didn't understand what he was talking about, <laughs> but it, it, and it's not on his presentations. He goes, again, this is something that's been explained to me several times and I just don't get it. But this is one of those, I didn't know you could combine those resources. Like if you have a HSA over here, you have a FSA over here, and then you have your self-directed RA. If you get an opportunity big enough, what you're saying is you can combine all three of those into one investment asset. And then when the distributions come back, then they all go back to their respective accounts. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. And you can do this with the accounts and, you know, you can even add in some of your personal funds too. So, you know, if, if you're trying to do real estate because you're trying to pay the bills and, you know, you're eating mm. with the money that you're making, then it probably doesn't make sense to do every single one of them in an mm. IRA. 
but you could use maybe some of your IRA and some of your personal funds. And when the deal is done, the profits go back and maybe you pay tax on you know, your personal amount, but you can use that today. And then some of it's going back to the IRA. So definitely partnering is one of our favorite strategies to talk about. And it's a nice way that, you know, you can have money go into different places and yeah. things the education accounts, you know, you can have some money, uh, maybe a smaller portion, but going back to your kids ESAs and then pull from that to, you know, buy books or, you know, uniforms, tutoring, whatever it is that you need. Yeah. So, do, do kids buy books anymore? Is it all audible and electronic i don't know like i I, we have well i take that back we're we're gonna um our five-year-olds our oldest one start school this year we're homeschooling and i can tell you we're getting something in the mail every day uh for the last two weeks it seems like getting him ready to to start that so the answer is yes they still do books (laughs) but i'm just curious like at the college level you know because that's what most people use the hsa accounts for right is to fund college or is that a misnomer yeah so the coverdell uh education savings account is actually can be used from the birth of the child all the way up until age 30. so if your kids end up going to college or you know postgraduate they want to you know become an attorney or a doctor whatever it can be used for that too and it's not just tuition, you know, it can be used, like I said, if, if you're, I don't know, you're going to Target and you're buying notebooks and paper and whatever and pens, you can pay for that sort of stuff tax-free. And um, of course, equipment, even something like Wi-Fi in your house, you know, if the kids are home being homeschooled right now, uh, you know, obviously they may need Wi-Fi to join the classroom for a Zoom call. You can actually be paying on a monthly basis that, completely tax free. So over a wow. lifetime, it can make a huge, huge difference to start, you know, paying that stuff with tax free money. for sure. Uh, you just added to my list of things to look at. Um, that's, <laughs> that's, that's good. incredible. Uh, that's good. That's good stuff. Um, on retirement, and I know Juan asked me, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we, he and I talked, that I need to ask you this question because, because we were talking about how, you know, my beard's growing out, it's getting grayer. I have, I can have more luck growing hair on my face than I do on my head kind of thing. And, you know, we're talking about retirement. He goes, you know, there's, we kind of went down in this rabbit hole about how much money do you need for retirement? He goes, actually yeah. ask Anne Marie, because she's got a really good, she's got a really good um, equation that you use, a really good number that you could use. So what is the magic number uh, or easy way for people to figure out how much they need to retire on, right? When we hit that mm-hmm. year 59 and a half or 60 or whatever. Yeah, this is kind of, uh, you know, in our world, a question that everybody wants to know, and I wish I could give kind of a firm answer. Um, Ultimately, it depends, right? Obviously, where are you living, right? What's the standard of living? How much are you living on now? Um, But roughly, kind of the experts in the industry tell us that, at least in Texas, for you and a spouse to retire and live to about 92 to 93 years of age, you need about 1.7 million saved up And of that figure, that's actually not everything that you may need, right? Um, Medical costs that might continue to increase, especially as you're aging, right? If you still have a mortgage, you know, those white sand Mm. beach vacations that they push on TV in retirement, right? Like (laughs) none of that is factored in there. Um, But I actually saw a stat, I was doing a presentation uh, just this week, um, but I saw a really interesting stat. So it was from the Department of Labor who oversees the IRS. And they basically said, on average, Americans need about 70% of their pre-retirement income um, prepared for themselves to have. So kind of good rule of thumb, consider that you need about maybe 70%. And there's a lot of good calculators, you know, just do a Google search and you can plug in sort of your average expenses and what you think you'd have coming in and all of that. But yeah, that, that's uh, sort of from our research, what we've been able to ascertain. So if I retire at 60 and I'm going to say I'm going to live to 80, probably stretching it there. But let's just say I retire at 60, right? It's 20, 20 years that I've got to go off of. And you said 70% of your annual salary. So for easy math, if I'm making 100000 uh, a year at 70%, so that's 70000 times those 20 years, that's close to 1.4, 1.5. So that's right in what you're talking about if I – don't take any of the vacations and just sit at home and 
<laughs> do my thing. All right. I, I just, it's, it's interesting. I, the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you think we'll be doing podcasts in They'll have something 40 years? It'll be interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what uh, the podcast, I was trying to explain to my dad what a podcast was recently. And I was like, hey, you know how you live, listen to those talk shows on AM radio? And he goes, yeah. I goes, that's what it is. It's just that <laughs> it's my generation's version of the AM radio talk show. He goes, Oh, okay. End of, <laughs> end of conversation. He's <laughs> love him to death, but he's uh, not a man. Of, he's a man of few words. Um, all right. So how do you in find investments? I'm, I'm watching the clock. I know you got a, kind of a hard stop here. So I, there's three questions remaining, right? How do you find investments to use with your self-directed RA? That'll be question number one. The other two I'll, I will say for here in just a minute. Yeah, so as far as finding deals, um, important to realize, you know, obviously us at Quest, our role as the custodian is that we hold the account and we really make the investment possible for the account. Once you have the deal, you've done your due diligence, you come back to us and we're going to help you to actually purchase it. Um, if there's expenses associated with the investment, you know, we're going to pay those and, and handle all of that for you. But in terms of actually finding the deal, um, we have to be really neutral and, and hands off. So we can never, you know, say, hey, uh, there's a great deal over here. We think you should put your money in or here's a fund, you know, this could be mm. a return. That, we can't do that. So what we like to do uh, is we have events where we bring in educators throughout the industry on a lot of different topics. And so we let them come in and, and just do general education about what it's like to invest in a flip, what it's like to invest in multifamily, what it takes to do mm. that, that sort of thing. And then we kind of let our clients go from there and, and pursue directly, you know, what they might be interested in doing. Um, and so Very we, cool. do, like I said, all these events throughout um, throughout the week and, you know, they're all online. We were doing them online before, so it kind of worked out, you know, when COVID <laughs> happened, we were kind of already ready and just ramped it up. So yeah. those are still going on and it's nice. We'll do like virtual hangouts and happy hours and stuff. That so was the, that's what I was trying to think of. There was the virtual happy hour. You guys do that. I, I need to join one of those just to see yeah. how, how you guys operate and I'm down for a drink, whatever, whatever's being served at the Helms house or wherever <laughs> I'm at that day, you know, It'll be fine. So um, that's for, that's really cool. So basically, you guys set up these events for the educational piece, and then networking just naturally happens as yeah. as people. So that's 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 really cool. I, I had not. I knew you guys were doing the virtual happy hour, but I was I was like, why, why would they? They're customer focused. Maybe that's that's just one of the things they're trying <laughs> to. Party started. That's it. That's it. I love it. I love it. All right. So three, I, I said three questions a minute ago. I'm going to add one more. So I'll lie to you just okay. a minute ago. So three questions. All right. Okay. What is the most popular investment you see at Quest? What is the strangest investment you've seen so far? And number three, what is the biggest uh, as far as money wise, uh, monetary wise that you've seen so far? Okay. So what was the first, the strangest one or the, no, most, the most popular? popular? What's the most popular? Yep. Most popular, um, believe it or not, is actually not people directly investing into real estate. Obviously, that's oh, really? very popular. Um, but I would say about 48% of our clients actually like to do the more passive side. So they're either creating new notes, they're lending to investors secured by real estate, or like you mentioned at the beginning, they're buying maybe performing or non-performing notes, you know, maybe from an institution and um, servicing those. So that's definitely, I would say, the most common that we see. Wow. Um, as far as the strangest, uh, all right, I've got, I've got two strange ones. Okay. Right well, I'll take two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So the first one is we have a client and they like to invest their IRA, um, I guess from their line of work before they actually got into self-direction. Um, they had some experience with like manufacturing, shipping, all of that. And so they ended up in retirement using their self-directed IRA to invest in a company that produces soy sauce bottles. They manufacture them. Okay. Them <laughs> so definitely uh, proof that, you know, you take your expertise and, you know, you run with it in self-directed IRAs. Yeah. And, you know, for most people not to soy sauce, but... More power to them. Uh, it makes me want to have sushi for dinner. So thank you <laughs> yeah. for that. I'll see if the wife's open for that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Um, and then the other one, this one is very uh, Texas themed. Of course, it, it would be this. But so we have a client um, and they are in horse racing. Okay. And so they directly invest into horse sperm and embryos to breed racehorses. That is wild. Okay. Yep. Yep. So you but can't buy coins, acres. but you can buy horse sperm with your yeah. self-directed <laughs> eye. If you didn't take anything away from the day, people, yeah. is that, <laughs> that's Western incredible though, right? That. <laughs> that's, uh, that's awesome though. That's, that's, uh, it shows the range of what you can do with it. Yep, um, exactly. Can you buy a racehorse or you, is it has to be the, can you buy a racehorse for yourself direct, directed? Yeah, you yeah, you, you definitely could. You could buy, um, you could definitely buy something like a racehorse, um, but kind of the little caveat to that is you can't store the horse in your home like barn you'd have okay. to actually have a place where you're storing it because you can't be like holding the you know normally you can't be like holding the asset in this yeah. case assets is the horse so just like with a rental property you can't manage the property yep. that's held by your self-direct ra yeah yeah yep. exactly okay all right kind of a king in the plan. Yeah, that's that's cool. uh <laughs> that is definitely i asked for it i got it right <laughs> um all right and then the third thing the the biggest amount of money you've seen transfer from a IRA into an investment? Man, that's a hard question. I would say probably the the biggest ones that we see are in the multifamily space. Obviously, mm. we've got a lot of clients that, you know, they're, they're syndicating multiple different investors together. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've seen deals where there's like, you know, 30 different IRAs invested into a company and they're, they're buying tons of properties. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Multifamily is definitely uh, hot right now. It's, yeah. uh, it is a tough space to be in for sure and finding new deals and making sure I have, I'm taking a tactical pause and trying to figure out what the heck's going on with the market. Why are people buying at the prices they're buying at? What do they know that? I, Cause it doesn't make sense to me. I'm not going to invest in it. And I've had similar to, you know, we're talking about earlier about the HSA and FSA. I've had people explain to me 15 different ways until they're, until they're cross-eyed and I still don't get it. And I'm like, <laughs> I, it's, it's going to click one day. It's going to click. Um, real, we've got like two minutes left, right? You t mentioned oil and gas earlier and it yeah. struck a nerve with me. So let's talk about how does, how does one go, what are they investing in when they, when they invest in oil and gas? Are they investing in the oil field? Um, or, you know, let me, let's talk about that. Just kind of entertain me for a minute on, on that. I, I'm very curious about that. Uh, yeah, aspect for of sure. I can kind of give you a high level, definitely is not my uh, area of expertise, sure. but okay. basically what I've seen some of our other clients do is usually they're actually directly investing into the company and then the company may be doing, um, they may own like a, a well, um, they're gotcha. drilling and things like that. And then, you know, they're, they're getting dividends back basically. It gotcha. is how okay. I've seen so it, it really is just a business, but it's focused on oil and gas, just like the the business I invested in is a tree removal service, right? Which yeah. he was warning me, Hey, if that hurricane comes through here, you're not going to hear from me from for a while. Right. Yeah. And he, I don't know if he's going to Louisiana or not. Um, I think he's got enough to keep him busy around here, but yeah, it's, probably. yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. Um, awesome. And Marie, thank you very much for your time. I've enjoyed I really have. So let me back up. I really have enjoyed working with Juan. The guy has on top of it. I mean, he's, he, um, I, every time I talk to him, I'm just impressed with the way he handles things, the professionalism, his ability to respond, uh, as quickly as he does. I, I don't know. I felt like I'm getting some special treatment, but come to find out I might be getting a little bit of that, but <laughs> I, he, I, I definitely think that, uh, that's just, how he works so kudos to you for for having him on your team and i hope the rest of your team is just like that which you said they were earlier but um for those of for those of you listening watching uh amory is we talked about this earlier she is open to questions comments whatnot we have set up a specific link for w2 capitalist uh members or or listeners viewers it's w2 cap w2 cap dot quest trust dot com you can go there's a form to fill out and it'll get to Anne Marie or Anne Marie's team right and uh Juan offered this a couple of weeks ago when we did uh recording for his and he was he said look 
just at, tell them, go fill out the form, call in, ask for one. You said the same thing earlier. And this, that is amazing customer service from, from where I sit. And the number, the phone number you gave me earlier was 855-FUN IRA. Did I get that right? Yep, that's it. That's We're awesome. trying to make it fun and easy to understand. I'm, I'm joining you guys for happy hour. When's the next happy hour? Are they always on Thursdays or? Yeah, we have one coming up. Um, we've actually started doing them before each of our trillion dollar investment mixers. Okay. So it's like the second Tuesday of the month and then the fourth week of the month, that's Monday, Tuesday. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to join. How do we, how, for folks listening, how do they get on that list? Do, do, can they just go to the website I gave and when they sign up, they're going to be put on that mailing and our um, distribution list. So when yeah. events come up, they'll get notified. Yep. Totally awesome. free for everybody. They just go to questtrustcompany.com and then they can click on events and there's a breakdown there of different webinars that we have. Awesome. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. But thank you very much for your time. We're at 259. We're one Perfect. minute away. So thank Love you very that. much. Enjoy the conversation. Hope we get to do it again soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. All right, guys, we just wrapped up with Amory, which is part three of this four-part series we're doing with Quest to kick off them sponsoring the podcast. I want to say partnership, but it's it's a they're sponsoring. Um, I'm happy to have them as the very first sponsor here of the podcast. It's super exciting. Helps me feel like I'm making some strides, and I hope you find this content valuable. I certainly do. I know, especially after today, see, I told you you could invest in horse sperm. I told you that. Uh, at the very beginning, you thought I was just joking. I'm not joking. You heard it from the horse's mouth. Dad joke there, right? Horse being Quest Trust. You get what I'm saying. Um, so many things that you can invest with using a self-directed RA. And Quest Trust, I've had a different company before. I migrated from them because their customer service absolutely was horrible. Now, Juan, who you heard in the first two episodes of this four-part series, was instrumental in that, right? I've had people in the mastermind join because of um, the presentation he did at the summit, which you can learn more information about that at w2capsummit.com. Anyway, point I can't stress enough is how incredible their customer service is, how responsive they are, and everything I've had to deal with them, which was include moving my IRA from another custodian over to them, transferring my 401k from the company I was laid off in COVID-19 into there, also into my first promissory note that I uh, loaned to a business here locally in Pensacola. So can't stress them enough. Check out, schedule your free console. Nothing doesn't charge you anything to um, talk to them as Anne Marie and Juan both said, Hey, they're not commission based, but they are there to serve you. Right? So go check them out. W2 cap W2 CAP dot quest trust.com schedule a free consult, right? Ask for Juan by name or ask for Anne Marie by name too. She, uh, she runs the team that Juan works on, but she also opened herself up to take calls. So ask for one of them too by name. I can tell you Juan is not going to treat you wrong. All right. If he does, let me know. Mm-hmm.